how do we stop pollution of factories? And there's an easy answer to that, but there's a more complex set of answers. And I want to unpack that a little bit. We're not going to be able to stop pollution in factories unless there are technological solutions to that pollution. So step one is that we need to make sure that whatever process or industrial activity the factory is involved in, there is a technology that exists or a new process that exists or a different set of inputs that exist that could potentially be used to either prevent or reduce the amount of pollution. In some cases, there may be no technological alternative. And in those circumstances, the only way in which we could stop the pollution from those factories is to actually shut them down. And then society would have to make a decision about whether or not it was willing to live without the goods or the other things that that factory provides. We may decide that those things are so important to us that we're willing to accept a little bit of pollution from them and they might have to, for example, grow trees or do some other thing to offset that pollution. Or we may decide that, sorry, you can no longer operate. But that's a very difficult decision to make. So step one is that we have the scientists doing the R&D that provide us with alternatives to carbon pollution problems. Let's assume, though, that those alternatives exist. There's a spectrum of strategies that we could use to encourage or require industry to shift towards these clean energies and clean inputs. The first is we could offer them incentives. We could either provide them with subsidies, we could give them money to install expensive new pollution control equipment or to change their processes, or we could offer them some kind of tax break um, that makes it economically worthwhile. We could develop a labeling system so that the industries that are using the good technologies get the public benefit, the commercial benefit, because they can say clean and green, carbon friendly on their product. Now, those sorts of incentives are effective in some circumstances, but they do depend on um, purchases, making good informed decisions, and they depend upon the industry deciding that those incentives are enough. If we really want to require immediate transition, in those circumstances, it may well be that we have to introduce new laws that require industry to either install new pollution control devices or to change their industrial processes. Generally speaking, governments think very carefully about these kinds of new laws because it's expensive to completely retrofit an industrial process or to install new pollution control equipment. And so there's some fairness questions about suddenly requiring these new, new um, technologies of industry. It can be done and it has been done in the past, but usually it would be introduced over time there would be a requirement that it be done by, for example, the year 2027 or some particular time frame, perhaps with incentives in there at the same time. Um, most states in Australia have got some kind of regulatory authority, an environmental protection authority or similar, that sets pollution control standards for particular industries. And in New South Wales earlier this year, uh, a community group actually took the EPA to court and said, you're not doing your job under the protection of environment legislation in New South Wales. You're not setting standards for climate change. And as a consequence of the successful outcome of that case, the New South Wales EPA is currently in the process of doing exactly this, of setting stricter standards around carbon pollution about around CO2 as an actual polluting uh, problem in New South Wales. If we require pollution control um, mechanisms for cleaner options, cleaner carbon options for our industries, then obviously there needs to be some enforcement around that. There's no point in having the law in place 
if there are no enforcement mechanisms. And again, there's a suite of mechanisms that could be used. Generally speaking, you would have a regulator that goes out and does inspections. And if there's a problem, they might issue an on the spot fine. In some circumstances, they would say, you're not doing the right thing and you haven't been telling us about it. So we're going to prosecute you and they could be liable for a criminal offence. And in the most uh, serious situations where there's been repeated failure by a factory or by an industry to improve their compliance, to meet new standards, in those circumstances, they may have their license to operate suspended or cancelled. Uh, some people refer to that as a, a factory's death sentence. So we've got a spectrum of interventions from finding a technological solution to then either encouraging or requiring the implementation of that technological solution. And despite my background in law, I wouldn't necessarily say that you always go to requiring legal um, obligations in the first instance. It's much better that you get people to arrive at the right solution themselves rather than have it rammed down their throat. But there will definitely be a role for those formal requirements as well. So thanks so much, St. Mary's College Grade 6 Banksia class. That was a really great question.